8 to 17. So Abraham, Abraham said to Lord, let's not have any quarrel between you and me, or between your husband and mine, for your brothers. It's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lord looked up and saw that the whole land of the whole plain of the Jordan was well watered, like the garden of, of the Lord. Verse 14. The Lord said to Abraham, to Abraham, after Lord had parted from him. Lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. And all the land that you, that you see to give to you and your offspring forever. 16. I will make you an offspring like the dust of the earth so that if any could come, any, if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring would be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I'm giving it to you. And this is the word of the Lord. Our Lord and our Father, we come before you this morning with our hearts full of thanksgiving. Lord, we don't take it for granted that you have gathered us together. And Father, we recognize that it cannot be in vain. It is because you want to have fellowship with us. It is because you want to have communion with us. And therefore, Heavenly Father, as I come to share your word, I pray that, Lord, you will be able to deposit words in our hearts, words that we can reflect on and words, words that can inform us throughout the week. Father, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate the Archdeacon for giving me an opportunity uh, to come to St. John's Pumwani. And uh, as the Archdeacon mentioned, for sure, this is my first time to worship with you. And I'm quite encouraged, I'm quite blessed from when we began the service. As I was listening to the choir, I remembered back in our church in St. Peter's Kahawa Sukari. Today we have the choir Sunday. And for those of us who cannot sing like they sing, because we really enjoy your voices, we belong to the non-singing members, those people that give you, that give you backup. So I was very excited just to listen to the choir and I'm very, very glad to have an opportunity to share the word of God with you. So thank you very much at Deacon, at Deacon and Judy, our good friends, and I don't take it for granted that you have extended the invitation to me. My name is Faith Kabiro, as it was mentioned, I'm born again, and I love Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, when the Archdeacon invited me, he asked me to speak on a topic that is very, very close to my heart, which is the power of a vision. And that's what I'm going to concentrate on um, so that then we can be able to share together. The power of a vision. Now, it is very interesting that when we talk about vision, um, sometimes we think, we think of vision in such a big way like the vision for Africa for, 1960, for, for 2063. We think about Vision 2030 for the nation of Kenya. And we think about big, big things when we hear of the word vision. But probably it is important that as we begin, that we go as basic as we can in our sermon this morning, in our reflection this morning. Because when we talk about vision, apart from these very, 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 very big companies that, uh, that uh, think about the vision of their company, apart from the nation that is thinking about our vision in the year 2030, it is important for us to know that vision is very personal. It's very, very personal. And I want to share it from a personal perspective. And so when you talk about the power of a vision, I want to begin from a very, very personal perspective. Our Bible reference was Genesis chapter 13, verse 8 to 17, if you came after the readings. And the second reference was Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 34. And I want to begin with our first reading. And I just want us to interrogate the story of this man called Abraham. And I think all of us, from when we were growing up in Sunday school, 
Abraham was a very, very common figure. If you remember, there's a famous song that we teach, we teach our little children called Father Abraham. Tunaijua? Yes. Uh, Father Abraham had many sons and I am one of them. When we talk about patriarchs, the people that we can, we can you know, when we, when we talk about our Christian faith and the people that we can look back to, we know that Abraham is one of them. And so it's amazing that that is the man we are interrogating this morning. He's also described as a man of faith and he's also described as a friend of God. That is why then when we look at the life of Abraham and his life of faith and as a friend of God, then we sing another song. Again, which says, I am a friend of God. Just as Abraham was a friend of God, I am also a friend of God. But this man who became a friend of God, this man who is a man of faith, it's very interesting that he had a long journey with the Lord. By the way, he was brought up in the most unlikely places, in the most unlikely scenarios. Because he was brought up in a country called R or U R. That's where he was brought up. And interesting enough, in this country, there were actually pagan worshippers. And so, unlike some of us that can trace back, we can say our fathers were Christians, our grandparents were Christians, our great-grandparents were Christian. For Abraham, he did not have that resource of just looking back and saying, like my father was, like my, grand, my, my grandfather was, he did not have that privilege. For him, he was brought up by people that were pagan worshippers, but in addition to that, even the environment in which he lived was an environment of pagan worshippers. And yet, out of him, today you say, he has many sons and I am one of them. Isn't it amazing that the Lord can get us from very far when he wants to accomplish his task? But it was not just one day, it was a journey that he journeyed with the Lord. And, his, and a long journey as the Lord called him to go to the unknown land. And then from there he kept on, on making promises to him. And of course, looking back, like the way we would say, reading the Bible retrospect, looking back, then we'll be able to see that for sure those promises came to fulfillment. And so, a very, very interesting journey that Abraham has begun. So I begin my first principle. And the first principle is the power of what you see. When we talk about the power of a vision, when you think about the bigger picture of where you'd want to go, the first principle is the power of what you see. Please look at your neighbor and tell them, by the way, what are you seeing around? What are they seeing around? Because we all came, and it is, um, and it is almost um, an hour from when we began the service, and I'm sure that you have been seeing many things, Cindy. You've been seeing the altar, you've been seeing your neighbor, you've been seeing the church. So the power of what you see. And I even dare say the extent of what you see. It is interesting. After this quarrel, we have Abraham and Lot. And there's a quarrel, and Abraham says, Ah, ah, it's very easy. Take, go to where you want to go, and then from there, whatever is going to remain, I will take. Now, if you go back to the text where we were reading, Lot looked through his carnal eyes. Did you realize that? Through his physical eyes. And he looked and saw these beautiful slopes. He saw it, it was well watered. And the Bible says that, interesting enough, he saw like it looked like the Garden of Eden. And it was beautiful. I imagine it was beautiful if it looked like the Garden of Eden. And when he saw that, he chose that. He looked using his physical eyes and what he saw, he settled for that. Now, the opposite is that Abraham did not see the Lord determined what he would see. And that became a differentiating factor. 
that differentiated the life of Lot and the life of Abraham. Actually, it actually charted for them a path. So that we have the path of Abraham from there taking a whole different shape. And the path of Lot taking another whole different shape. My brother, my sister, as we reflect this morning of the power of, of, the, of a vision, the power of what we see, make sure that you are seeing right. And make sure that you are not just canon. Make sure that God determines what you see. Because what you see this morning is going to chart direction, not only for your personal life, but including for your family and for your generations to come. Do you? And I was thinking about this, I was asking myself, Faith, what do you see when you look at your family? What do you see when you look at your children? What do you see when you look at the church the Lord has given you to be for this particular season, which is St. Peter's? What do you see? And now that I have come to St. John's, Faith, what do you see when you look at St. John's? And I go ahead and ask you, when you look at the community where you live, what do you see? A story is told of three men who went to India. They had come from the developed nations, so probably Europe or US, and they went to India. And when they went to India, uh, specifically New Delhi, when they got there, they realized that the place was crowded and many people were walking in the towns and in the streets barefooted. Sawa sawa? And when one man looked at these men that were walking barefooted, he thought about how sad it is, took his photo, his camera, and started taking photos of these people that were walking barefooted. And then he wrote a caption there and said, Oh yeah, know that caption of oh yeah, look at them walking barefooted, oh yeah. And of course, he probably attracted like a thousand likes. See you? And people commented and said, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then after one month, the story was forgotten. The second one looked at the same people, the same people, looked at them, and then he asked himself, now that I'm coming from a developed nation, what if I take photos and share with people that have a little more? Could it make a difference in the life of these people? And he went back and created a website. And when he created the website, he was able to give stories about these people that were walking barefooted. And many people wanted to join in his course to, to be able to just get nice shoes for them so that then they don't get infections. Who, who are we seeing here? People in the city walking barefoot. The first one saw people and went like, oh yeah, took photos and posted and the story was forgotten. In short, he went on a pity party. Sawa sawa? The second one looks at the same people, the same people, but he thinks, what about the people that are out there in my country who can be of help to these people? Then he goes ahead to help. Now the third one looks at them. And then when he looked at these people that are walking bare feet, he started interacting with them and asking them, why are you walking bare feet? And they said, because it's very hot, and so the shoes that we get here are closed, probably like what you're wearing, closed, some of them are sneakers we can't wear. It's very hot, we prefer to walk barefoot. He went back to his country, went to a shoe company. You know shoe companies? The ones that make shoes like butter, he went to their butter, and he looked at them and said, ah, you guys have market for you in India. If you can make an appropriate shoe, they will sell like hot cake. And they started making sandals and started selling them in India. Did what they see change? Is what they were seeing different? It was the same thing. Are we together? They were seeing people that were bare feet, but their perception was different. It is possible that mommy, the child you're looking at, is the same child that I'm looking at. Are you getting what I'm saying? The child that you're calling problematic 
is the same child that I could be calling the next president. Are we together? It could be the same challenges that your child is struggling with. It is what every teenager is struggling with. Are we together? What your business is struggling with. It could be the same thing that other businesses are struggling with. The, the same challenges you're facing at your place of work. If there was a support group, you'd be shocked. It's the same, it is the same malicious boss. Everyone is going to talk about a malicious boss. What am I saying? The power of what you see. And I was asking myself, getting, getting deeper into this, how comes these three men looked at the same thing but saw different things? The word of God. What that, does God say concerning marriages? What does he say about children? What does he say about businesses? Are we together? You know, sometimes people think God does not speak about businesses. He does. So what does he say? And so it's my responsibility to constantly interact with the word of God so that I understand the mind of God, so that I get the right perspective. In the same text that we read, Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 4 was the call of Jeremiah. And I love that. Before I formed you, before I put you in your mama's womb, I knew you. What does that tell you? What does that tell you about your children? Who does that tell you about the people that you're interacting with, including your spouse? Your perspective must be right. What do you see? Trust me, the extent to which you see is the second one. The extent to which you see. The first one was the power of what you see. The second one is the extent to which you see. It is one thing to see and to see right. But it's another second thing for you to see the extent. Are we together? When I was thinking about the extent to which I see, the extent to which you see, listen to what God told Abraham. Look around from where you are to the north and south, to the east and west. Do you realize that? To the north and to the south. The extent, north, south, east, West. Do you realize that? The extent to which you see. And so he tells Abraham, look around from where you are, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. All the land that you see, I will give it to you. So what do you see was the second one? What was the first one? The second one is the extent to which you see. And the extent to which you see determines what you get. What Abraham was able to see is what he got. To the extent of north, to the extent of south, to the extent of east, to the extent of west. And it is interesting because the same, uh, the same story continues in chapter 15. So takeaway assignment is when you go home you read 15. So, now when you get to 15, you will see the conversation going on. And this is the second time Abraham is in the tent. And the Lord is saying, get out of the tent, look up to the sky, count the stars. If you can count them, then that will be the number of your offsprings. And sometimes I like to be, I like, I like to think beyond. Can you imagine? Kama Abraham alikuwa sisasa kwa tent. Sindio? So can you uh, stars, stars uh, come during the day or night? In the night. And so imagine Abraham was in the tent, okay? And then it is in the night. And then God says, get out of the tent. Imagine kama Abraham angesema, kuna baridi, kuna nyasha, kuna mosquitoes. Are you get what I'm saying? Can you imagine if he started giving those excuses? And then he says, ah, nikosawa hapa. You know that nikosawa? Nikosawa hapa. So that then he's looking out like this. Angeon angapi. To the extent he saw determined the extent of, you know, the number of offsprings he was going to get. My, my friends, wamama, kama unaketi na mama wakisirani. Unanisikia? Unaketi na mama wakisirani. Unapavena na ungea na whispers. Wazewa sisikia. Kama unakafu 
from morning to evening na mama wa kisirari. If you sit in the gossip areas from morning to evening, what content are you getting in? Now, what attitude do you imagine you will get? Kama unaketi na watoto ambao, oni unu na watu ambao, kazi yao ni kulani watoto wao. Are we together? Weji angalie, hutakuwa kitu kwa maisha yako. Weji angalie, umefanya nini? Kazi, kazi ni kulana watoto wao. What attitude do you imagine you yourself you will get? And so your attitude is important. Determine ni, ma, ni nini utasikia kwa, kwa masikio yako, ni nini itaingia kwa akili yako. It will determine your attitude. The next thing that is likely to determine how far you will see is your own environment. Are you listening to me? Your own environment. My friends, choose your environment. Are we together? And the environment you can choose. Are we together? For example, today you chose to be in church. This is the environment you chose. And because of this environment, at least the choir blessed you. Are we together? And probably you will get a word or two that you can run with throughout the week. The second one, and listen to this one. The extent to which you see, the extent to which you see will be determined by how you understand yourself in the concept of time. Hey, let me explain this a bit. The Anglican Church of Kenya was founded in 1844. Me, I didn't say 19. 1844. 1844. So how comes, how comes that church is still active today? Because someone did what they did in context of time. Are we together? It was not about, it was not about me. It was about doing it for a longer time and for the next generation. Are we together? And so how far you will see, see beyond yourself. Are we together? See beyond yourself and, and, and um, if you are an African, and I can see there are a lot of Africans here, we are very happy when we see our children get children. Mimi na na najitayarisha nafanya press ups. Sawa sawa. Kuwa show show nafanya press ups, press ups. Najua Mungu atanifikisha hapo. We look forward to a time when our children will get children. Isn't it? Why? Because it something in our heart tells us my generation is not gone. Are we together? So my question is this. Now how far you see if you see just within yourself. Are we together? Then what happens to the people that are going to come after you? See beyond yourself. Are we together? David saw beyond himself. That's one when he could not construct the temple. Guess what happened when he could not construct the temple? Then his son Solomon. He empowered his son Solomon to construct the temple. See beyond you. See beyond you. Don't just think about I, me, and myself. Think about beyond you. The third principle. Tunaindanisha pamoja. The first one was the extent, you know, the power of what you see. The second one was the extent to which you see. The third one <laughs> is the extent to which you actualize. You see, it is one thing to see, right? You remember? He was asked, Jeremiah was asked, what do you see? And he was told, you see correctly. Are we together? Then the extent was defined. But then guess what? The third concept or the, that principle is the extent to which you actualize. My friend, it is possible. It is possible for you to see. It is possible for you to even dream so that your extent is very big. But it is another thing for your dream or for what you have seen to get molds. Are we together? Or to get rusty because you did nothing about it. If you go back to our reading in Genesis chapter 13, after Abraham was told to look north, south, and all that, verse 17, this is what he was told. Go walk through the length, the breadth of the land that I am giving you. Are we together? Go walk through the length and breadth of the land for I am giving you that land. And I want to use the analogy of parenting, which is very close to my heart. And so, I am a mother from St. John's Pumwani. Are we together? And the Lord has blessed me with a spouse and has blessed me with children. 
Have you imagined me? Have you imagined me? A mother in St. John's Pumwani, the Lord has given me a spouse and has given me children. But I'm also a father in Pumwani who the Lord has given me a wife and has given me children. Are we together? And you can even think of me who the Lord trusted me to raise children alone. Are we together? So did you see me? A mother with children, a father with children, and me alone who has no spouse, but the Lord has trusted me with children. Can you see me? All right. So, depending with the one you want to pick, you can pick the father that has a spouse and children, the mother that has a, a, has a spouse and children, or the mother that is raising children alone, or the father that is raising children alone. Whoever that you want to pick. But pick that person and let us walk with them. What do they see in their children? You remember the first one was what? What do they see in their children? When they are having those little children they are raising, what do they see in their children? Do they see a repeat of their own mistakes? Are we together? Or do they see an independent person who the Lord can establish? Right? So this mother sees the children or this person sees the children as a gift. Are we together? Sees the children as a blessing. As a blessing that is going to not only be a blessing to them, but a blessing to the community and a blessing to the nation. So when they speak to them, they speak to them like they are speaking to a blessing. See, they have seen the what? They have seen the child as a blessing. So when, the, so when the child comes home, they go like, I'm so happy that you're here. And remember, you have a big future, a big bright future ahead of you. Do you see the words of the mother? And then when, again, when they are speaking to that child, they say, I know, and I know for sure, you'll be a great person in this land. Do you get that? When they go to school and they do not, be, you know, they do not achieve very well in school, when they come, the mother tells them, mm -mm, when I look at this report, it doesn't look like the you I know. Have we together? And then when they're hanging around bad company, sawa sawa, they're hanging out with bad companies, they say, ah, remember I said you're going to be a big person in this land? Big people do not hang around such people. Are we together? Can you hear the word and the attitude of that parent? Can you hear them? Because they have seen right. Are we together? They have seen the child as a gift. They have seen the child as a blessing. Then from there, the extent to which they see. Are we together? The extent to which I see, they see this child becoming a great person in this nation. So they start preparing them for greatness. Are we together? They see the children as great people in this land and so they start preparing them. And then the last one, the extent of actualization, taking them to school. Are we together? Giving them those opportunities, including knocking doors on their behalf. Are we together? Where you say, hey, James, Nikona mtoto na memaliza form 4. Unaona nini? Are we together? Because my space is not enough, na buruta ya James Pia. Are we together? Nikisikia VBS, na leta watoto. Sindio? Because I want to build their capacity. Because there will be great people in this life. Are we together? Then, so the extent of actualization is the actually doing it. Are we together? The actually doing it. Every time I think the actual, the actualization or the doing what, guess what comes to my mind? The story in Matthew chapter 21 of a father. And this is interesting because this father had two sons, and you can read that in the gospel, in, um, in, in, um, in, a, in chapter 21. And so you see a father. Are we together? And this father has two sons. He calls the first one. Listen to this one. He calls the first one and says, this is what I want you to do. Then the boy says, I will do it. But at the end of the day, does nothing. You remember that parable of the two sons? The second one says, hey, come here. This is what I want you to do. Then he says, I won't do. But in the evening, he does it. And Jesus is asking, who do you think the father was happy? That, you know, who do you think the father was proud of? And they all answered, the one who said, they won't do, but they did. Are we together? Look at your neighbor and tell them it is time to do. Are we together? 
So that which the Lord is going to show you, are we together? To the extent you will see, can you go and do? Our Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word. I pray that you will, you, you will be able to plant a word or two in the mind of every one of us. Let us run in one thing or two that we can use in our families, in our community, and in the church so that we can be able to see our lives becoming as you planned and them aligned to the bigger picture that you have in our mind, in your, in your mind. Father, we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.